Hello and welcome to the IFROF Learning Solution. This is a module 3 and the concluding session on numbers. In this session, we will learn more about remainders and the magic of numbers. In addition, we will also learn and do more of the miscellaneous problems based on numbers and how to crack them easily. What actually is the remainder? In arithmetic, the remainder is the amount left over after the division of two integers which cannot be expressed with an integer quotient. We will now take an example to illustrate the above definition. Let us divide 247 by 7. On division, we see that 247 is not completely divisible by 7. The leftover or the remainder is equal to 2. The other terms that are important to remember in division are divisor, quotient and dividend. Further on, we will see how these new terms are related to each other. Let the dividend be A. Let the divisor be D. Let the quotient be Q. And let the remainder be R. Thus, we can write 247 is equal to 7 into 35 plus 2. If we rewrite the above by replacing the numbers by the corresponding terms, we get A is equal to D into Q plus R. Hence, R is equal to A minus D into Q. We will now apply the concept that we have learnt. Let us take a question. Find out the number which when divided by 17 gives 5 as a quotient and 11 as a remainder. According to the question, the divisor is equal to 17, the quotient is equal to 5 and the remainder is equal to 11. We know that the number is equal to divisor into quotient plus remainder. Replacing the values, we get the number to be equal to 17 into 5 plus 11. Hence, the number is equal to 96. We now know what are remainders. We have gone through the HCF or the highest common factor and LCM or the lowest common multiple of numbers in the previous session. Now, we will look at a few important relationships between remainders and the highest common factor and the lowest common multiple. If A, B, C give remainders P, Q, R respectively, when divided by the same number H, then H is the highest common factor of A minus P, B minus Q and C minus R. If the highest common factor of two numbers, A and B, is H, then the numbers A plus B and A minus B are also divisible by H. If a number N always leaves a remainder R when divided by the numbers A, B and C, then N is a lowest common multiple of A, B, C plus R. We will now apply the concept that we have learnt. We take a question. Find the greatest number which will divide 369, 449, 689, 5009 and 729 so as to leave the remainder 9 in each case. We know the following property. Thus, the required number is the highest common factor of 369 minus 9, 449 minus 9, 689 minus 9, 5009 minus 9, 729 minus 9. Further reducing, we get the required number to be the highest common factor of 360, 440, 680, 5000 and 720. Therefore, the required number is 40. Let us now go through another question. 
what is the smallest sum which a person can have such that when he is distributed rupees 2.50 or rupees 20 or rupees 12 or rupees 7.50 per person in a group he is always left with rupees 2 we know the following property thus the required sum is the lowest common multiple of 2.50 20, 12, and 7.50 plus 2. Further reducing, we get the required sum to be equal to 60 plus 2. Hence, the required sum becomes equal to 62. Let us now have a look at some of the important points. The remainder of a number on division by 2 is either 1 or 0. For example, any odd number when divided by 2 gives a remainder equal to 1 and any even number when divided by 2 gives a remainder equal to 0. The remainder of a number on division by 10 is the same as the last digit. For example, 1109 when divided by 10 gives a remainder equal to 9. The last digit in this example is 9. The remainder of a number on division by 4 is same as the remainder left when the number formed by its last two digits is divided by 4. For example, 675 when divided by 4 gives a remainder equal to the remainder when 75 is divided by 4. That is 3. The last two digits in this example is 75. The remainder of a number on division by 5 is same as a last digit if the last digit is less than 5 or is equal to last digit minus 5, if the last digit is greater than 5 and is equal to 0, if the last digit is equal to 5. For example, 675 when divided by 5 gives the remainder equal to 0 because it is equal to 0 if the last digit is equal to 5. Again, when 677 is divided by 5 gives the remainder 2 because it is equal to the last digit minus 5 if the last digit is greater than 5. Again, when 673 is divided by 5, it gives the remainder equal to 3 because it is the same as the last digit if the last digit is less than 5. We will now do a detailed study of the modulo operation. It will help us in finding out remainders. Now what is modulo operation? Modulo operation finds out the remainder that comes out from the division of one number by another. The notation is as follows. 12 mod 9 is equal to 3. The above statement implies that when 12 is divided by 9, we get 3 as a remainder. Also, if in general A mod B is equal to C, then A minus C is completely divisible by B. Thus, 12 minus 3 is completely divisible by 9. The modulo operation can be applied whenever we want to. Firstly, a plus b plus up to so on mod m is equal to a mod m plus b mod m up to so on into mod m. Secondly, a into b into so on into mod m is equal to a mod m into b mod m into so on into mod m. Let us now apply the concept we learnt in modulo operation. Consider the following question. What is the remainder when 3 raised to 8 is divided by 7? In other words, we have to find out 3 raised to 8 mod 7. We know that A into B mod M is equal to A mod M into B mod M into mod M. 
Therefore, 3 raised to 8 can be written as 3 raised to 4 into 3 raised to 4 is equal to 3 raised to 2 into 3 raised to 2 into 3 raised to 2 into 3 raised to 2. Thus, 3 raised to 8 mod 7 is equal to 3 raised to 2 mod 7 into 3 raised to 2 mod 7 into 3 raised to 2 mod 7 into 3 raised to 2 mod 7. The statement shown in the bracket is 9 mod 7 which is equal to 2. Therefore, 3 raised to 8 mod 7 is equal to 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 mod 7 which is equal to 16 mod 7 is equal to 2.